Hi everyone, welcome to this next episode in my Build Your Own SFX100 Motion Platform video series. Um, so in this video I just want to go through the rest of the wiring of the motor driver. And um, as you can see, I've housed it all in this electrical cabinet that, was a, that I got from links.com. Um, I'll put a link in the video description of where I got this from. I think it was about £80. It's quite nice though. Um, I'm going to go a little bit backwards because I've already built this up. Um, I shall take a few bits off and show you how I put it together, um, what comes with it, what modifications I had to make. Um, but as you can see, it's basically an electrical cabinet. I think it's about 600 mil square by uh, about three, 350 from memory. And as you can see, the motor drives are housed inside. So, uh, I like the look of it. So what I've done is I've put a little um, fascia panel in that I made from black perspex. Uh, I've cut out windows in it, as you can see, for the motor drives to stick through. That tidies up all the look of the wiring, etc. So what I'll do is I'll take that fascia panel off um, and then we can have a look inside and see how I've mounted the motor drives. But essentially 90% of what you see comes in the kit of bits with the electrical box. The only bits that didn't come are that fascia panel that I've cut myself and um, two bits of aluminium angle that I made up uh, to actually fit the motor drives onto. But the, the rails and stuff inside um, that all of that fits to uh, come in this uh, kit from Lynx. So there we can see the motor drives themselves um, that are normally hidden behind that fascia panel. I'll try and move in a bit closer, a bit of an angle. So hopefully you can see in the back there, I've made up two aluminium angles that the um, motor drives are bolted to. Um, the box is quite deep move around have a look. the box itself is quite deep so I've moved the drives themselves to the front of the box and there's another good look of the aluminium angle brackets I thought I'd move the drives towards the front of the box so that I've got plenty of room at the back to hide all the mess of wiring um, plus also it obviously makes the accessibility to all the buttons and everything for the motor drives themselves that bit easier. 
I suppose in an ideal world, we'd have a electrical cabinet that was probably about 300 mil. Um, or maybe no, maybe six to eight inches uh, less deep. Um, but I think it makes a nice, neat housing for it all. Okay, so in one of the earlier videos, I wired up one of the uh, drive controllers um, and got it working. So the rest of the video of this video is going to be put aside to wiring up the other three. <clears throat> now I've been giving this a lot of consideration. Each one of these motor drives is rated at, I think, 15 amps, which gives us a potential total of 60 amps. But no matter what we do with our wiring into a normal like three phase house, we've only got, I think, 13 amps available. Because if we put it all into one plug, we've got a 13 amp fuse in the plug. If we put it into four plugs, but then into an extension lead, we've still only got 13 amps in the extension lead. And then if we put four plugs into four different sockets on a ring main, depending on what the fuse rating is on the ring main, uh, I think we've still only got about 13 amps. Um, even if we don't, we certainly haven't got the full 60 amps. So I think the safest thing to do, and our only real option, is to link them all together so because the worst case is that we're going to draw over 13 amps and we'll blow the fuse but we certainly won't set fire to anything and if we do draw keep drawing more than 13 amps and blowing the fuse uh, then we'll have to look at an alternative way of doing it which hasn't occurred to me yet and hasn't come up in my research um, so in order to do that i bought a reel of um, 16 amp um, three core wire and I'm just going to link all four controllers together in the set with this obviously with the same wiring configuration that I did on the first one so that's what I'm going to do now okay so I've made myself up three short or three lengths of um, cable and like before, I've soldered the ends to stop them fraying. So now I'm just going to loop these between the four um, drives. And then that should be them all wired up. And we can power it up and have a little look. Okay, so that got the um, sort of power wires all looped and linked up. Uh, next thing to do is the control electronics for the servo motors. Uh, electronics, electrics, sorry. Um, so again, copying the first one that we did, I'm just going to put these other three in quickly and then put the data cables in and close the box back up. Right, there we go, so that was straightforward, simple. I'll just recap the wiring, I'll zoom in here for you. Okay, so single phase wiring, live, neutral in the top two, and then we have U, V, and W, so brown, blue, and black on the last three connections on the bottom. Earths on the uh, heat sink bit. Straightforward, really. And the loops that I've just done, I've just literally put, you know, a wire in at the top, 
wiring at the top, wiring at the bottom, and just join them over so they all connect up to the one plug. Time to put the fascia panel back on. Then I might plug it in and see what the effect's like with the uh, nice shiny black fascia and the red LED. And there we go. That's the effect of the fascia panel with the digital displays. Okay, so all that's left to do really to finish this uh, video off now is just to um, plug in the cables that connect to the motors, the servo motors themselves. And then in a future video, um, we'll look at the wiring for the Arduino board uh, and the connections to your PC. Um, so the motor has that end on it. So obviously we're gonna have four of these wires that come in the kit. And they just go in the smaller D type port in the bottom of each of the drives. Then screw up. Now I'm going to pass them down the side to each end and back out a hole that's in the top of these of this cabinet. Then the last thing for the front of the um, electrical cabinet is to put the uh, 25 pin uh, cables in that, and again follow that same route back so that we can um, plug them into, uh, in my case, the motor shield for the um, Arduino. Um, if you're not gonna use the motor shield, then the breadboard arrangement uh, for connecting to the Arduino can all go in the back of the cabinet. So I'll just put these cables around the back and then that's uh, I think us done for this video.
And there we go. That's that finished. Thanks very much for watching this video. Uh, like and subscribe to the channel, please, to receive notifications of new videos I do in the series. And until then, uh, thanks for watching.